Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show, we are at episode number 200. Two zero zero. Man, I I can't believe I've done this 200 times. Something must be wrong with me. You think about this. Uh, we'll discuss that in episode 201. <laughs> but for real, though, um, you know, there's 52 weeks in a year and we don't record every week. There's always a few weeks here and there where we don't record. So that's easily more than four years uh, of doing this. So, yes. Um, not to take anything away from it, though, I'm very proud at what I've accomplished so far. Uh, doing a few things here, a few things there to make it better. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get up to another level every week. And pretty soon I'll be almost where we want to be. And uh, I got to say, it's good to have you on board. And uh, I appreciate your uh, insight and opinions. And uh, it, it means a lot. Well, I'm glad to be here. It gives me an outlet. As an old man to just get shit off my mind when I need to. Uh, I get and that. I think I came in on episode 90 something. 98. 98. It was 98. So, yeah. So you, you had been on a few times before, but that was because we had the um the family on there. We we had mm -hmm. everybody on there, but uh, uh, officially it was number ninety eight, and uh, been going strong ever since. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you mentioned this is an outlet. This is a place to vent. Well, my friend, you have some venting to do too. Um, week one in the National Football League happened, and uh, for those that have been keeping score, here's our picks. Um, as you can see, we both had the Chiefs. Um, it came down to a toenail, but they won. Packers, Eagles, uh. I feel you going with Jordan Love. I, I get that. And we'll get to him in, in a little bit later on. The Eagles prevailed 34 to 29. Dolphins gave us a scare because I think they trailed for most of that game, then tied it up and took the lead. Then there's the Bengals. Or I'm a, yeah, I'm going to start calling we, them the Bungles right now because we, we both crapped the bed on that one. Who saw the Patriots going in there and doing that in Cincinnati? Nobody. Well, except for maybe diehard New England fans. Yeah. So, man, I, I sucked at my picks last week. Um, we Let's both see, had I the got, Texans. We both had the Vikings. One, two, three, I, four. You, you went nine and seven, by the way. Five, six. Seven. Yep. I was bad on seven. Mm, mm, mm. Um, I told you the Saints were going to go in there and take care of the um, Panthers because it came down to who was the worst team. And the Panthers are the worst team. Uh, your your team is missing Derek Carr. I know that's right. Because we sucked. Uh, the Bills gave us another scare. All right. I, I think they finally woke up in the fourth quarter and realized Diggs is not coming through that door. And uh Yeah, my my pick Cardinals wasn't too far out the out no, the box there. No, it was not. Tell you what though, here's where you picked right. I figured Kirk Cousins was gonna, you know, do some offensive magic in Atlanta and Pittsburgh had no offense. Turns out Pittsburgh didn't need any offense. What was that? Five, six field goals from yeah, uh, I think it was like 15 to 10 or something like that. 18 to uh, eighteen to 10. 18 to 10. Yeah, they threw on another field goal at the end of it just for good measure. And, yeah. I, I T.J. Watt had himself a day. I I don't even know what to say. Uh, and uh, gotta we'll think get about to the Steelers the, again in a minute. Yeah, you got to just think about the team they're playing. The Falcons suck. 
I see that now. Uh, Bears, they did go in there and th th they survived against the Titans. The Titans took a lead and couldn't hold it. Yeah. The and Bears, then there's the <clears throat> the Bears defense is what won that game. They had a yes. couple turnovers and one pick six. Very true. So that helped them. Bolts, Raiders, it was 22 to 10, but it wasn't even that close. Um, they couldn't muster any kind of offense. I mean, nothing. I got nothing to say on that. Uh, Seahawks did take care of business at the end to uh, beat the Broncos. And the Broncos looked good, though, for stretches. They really did. Yeah, they looked tight. Commanders were the commanders. The Buccaneers prevailed. The Cowboys did a number on the Browns. Uh, Deshaun Watson looked like he needed to go back to the massage parlor. Yes. Ask for and, a refund. Yeah, right? Lions he wasn't did, relaxed. No, it was not. Lions and 49ers <laughs> closed it out with wins in both of their games. So that was week one. Again, Ryan, you went nine and seven. Yours truly went 13 and three. I don't know if I'll have another good week like that, so I'm going to celebrate now because uh, week two is where it gets dicey. Um, before we get you're to keep, week You're going to keep track of these, right? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Good deal. And we'll have this up every week. Um, before we get to the games for uh, next week, let's talk about that Tyree Kill situation. Okay. <clears throat> We've both seen the uh, body cam footage. Yes. And I believe that they were both in the wrong, the officer and Hill. Uh, Hill was being disrespectful and belligerent. The officer was being arrogant. I mean, there's no two ways about it. They were both wrong. Yeah, I would tend to agree. Um, my problem with the, with the police uh, officers was – it wasn't the officer who initially was talking to Tyreek. It was the second officer that came up and pulled him out of the car. Um, you know, so I, he kind of wasn't involved. He just got ticked off. It seemed like because he Tyreek wasn't doing what the guy said. You know, he did right. roll up his window, but he told him, "Don't bang on my window like that." You know, um, there is no excuse for it either direction, either way. Um, but unfortunately, um, I've never had this issue, obviously, cause I'm not a, uh, person of color <laughs> in this country. Uh, but I have witnessed it with my family members and my friends, you know, there's a different set of rules when you're not a Caucasian being pulled over by the police. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, being of color i have been a part of it and i've seen how we are treated based on how we dress what we have and what we don't have so that does kind of suck there but also you have to handle yourself in a professional way you have to handle yourself in a respectful way to the other person because you give what you get and I strongly believe if Hill had been just a tad bit respectful, he might have just got his ticket and got on. And just, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. We really wouldn't. But to be honest, you probably wouldn't even got a ticket. True. It, you know, I mean, it's like, it was hey. right outside the stadium. I know. And dudes would be like, hey, go, go, Bills. I mean, Bill, sorry. <laughs> I'm Jaguars. stuck on the Bills. Go, no, not Jaguars. Go Dolphins and, and I mean that's who they were playing. That's a, that was my joke. The police officer was a Jaguar fan. Yeah, uh, but you yeah. know, you know, just going back to that, you know, as a police officer, it's their job to de-escalate the situation, not escalate it. So right. it's not necessarily the civilian. Okay, in a perfect world, should civilians be respectful so they can get it? over with as soon as possible mm -hmm. yes okay H however um in the so society that you and i both grew up in and 
uh, that is more prevalent today as it was, you know, 30, 40 years ago, you know, the, the turn the other cheek, the, uh, you know, we shall overcome mentality is not in that, in, in that generation's mindset. So they're automatically looking at authority differently. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, and so that, you know, I don't blame Tyreek for the way he reacted. Did it cause, did it cause a ripple effect of the reaction from police officers? Yes, but it doesn't make it right. Exactly. I mean, theoretically he's paying that officer's salary because he's a civil servant. Mm -hmm. I should be able to talk to my employee. However, I want to talk to him respectfully. I'm glad you threw that on there at the end because I was gearing going to work and say some stuff tomorrow. Never mind. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. Speaking of getting things right, this might be a get right week for Kevin. Uh, excuse me for um, Big Show. I'm. I got rust. Deshaun Watson. It happens to all of us. I got rust. This might be a get back week for Big Show. Um. These are some tough games. I don't know, bro. Thursday night is the Bills and the Dolphins. It's at the Dolphins, so I'm going to probably go with the Dolphins because the Bills didn't show me enough just because they overcame against Arizona. And I know people say, well, the Dolphins didn't show me enough, but that's the Jaguars. You know, you're talking about a division opponent. And they're going to play you tough anyway. Not a division so, opponent. I'm sorry, a conference opponent. Yeah. Conference opponent. Um, still, same. State. I mean, it's week. It's week one. So, yeah. Defenses are ahead of the offenses, and the way that the coaches coach their teams now, they the offensive stars don't play in the preseason usually. Sure. I think they said. 10 out of the 32 starting quarterbacks did not play a snap in preseason, you know? Um, so you could see the bad quarterback play. I'm, um, I'm going to go I'm with gonna, the Dolphins. I'm going to pick Miami as well, just mainly because Josh Allen's wrist injury mm -hmm. on his left hand. Um. I do believe Bills are the better football team. However, I believe Dolphins are going to win. Okay. So, Sunday, the Saints go to Dallas, and this is going to be a come-down game for the Saints. Like I said, the Panthers just suck. So, you can hang 47 on them. You're not hanging 47 on the Cowboys. Say what you will about Dallas and Jerry World. This is the Cowboys' home opener. It's it's not going to happen it's going to be a close game, but I got Dallas winning that game. Are you saying that um, you you can't you can't hang thirty on them or whatever forty some odd points on them because it's in? No, because it's Dallas's defense. Dallas's defense is not uh, uh, Carolina's defense. What? You can't hear me? I didn't I didn't press anything. What happened? There you go. You're back. I didn't do anything. I don't okay. know, but you're back now. Whatever it was. Okay. Uh but I was saying no, uh Dallas's defense is way better than Carolina's defense. No, no, I get that. But they were in uh they were in Oh, I got you. True, true, I get that. But Green Bay hung what 40 on them in the playoffs in that in Jerry World last year. So it is possible. That's true. But Green Bay, I would say, is a much better team than New Orleans. Mm, I wouldn't say much better. Um, and we, we'll but, get back to Green Bay when we get yeah. there. You, yeah, you, but you, I'm, you might I'm be right. Cowboys. Cowboys. I'm, I'm not okay. even going to debate. Cowboys. Uh, Bucks at the Lions. I'm going with the Lions because I think they're a superior team. That's a tough one. That's a tough one because Detroit almost lost against the Rams. And who'd the Bucks play last week? 
the Washington Commanders, right? Yes. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I'm gonna go Detroit. I, I want to pick, but Tampa Bay, but I'm gonna go Detroit. All right, let's get back to that uh, Jordan Love thing. Is he out Sunday? Yes, he's out for the next four weeks. All right, I'm going with the Colts then. Colts over the Packers. That Anthony Richardson showed me some things against the Houston Texans. Yeah, but again, that's a division game. That's division rivals, so they know each other very well. Um, uh, Green Bay's home opener. Who's their quarterback? Malik Willis, right? Uh, if you say so, I am not sure. Colts. Colts as well. All right. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets against the Titans. I'm going to go with the Jets. Really? Yes. I'm going to go Titans. Ooh, our first different Jets. one. Jets didn't show me anything last night. They looked pathetic. Uh, 49ers are going into Minnesota, and I got them beating the Vikings. I agree. San Francisco. Seahawks are going to New England. One of these teams is walking away with an L, and I think it's going to be the Patriots. I'm going with Seattle. I'm going with New England. Okay. All right. Um, Giants are the Giants. The Commanders, they at least have some heart. I'm going with Washington. Who did New York play last week? Let's see here. New York played. Where are the Giants on here? They played Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Lost 28 to 6. Mm -hmm. And but Washington got handled pretty handily as well, right? Washington lost to the Bucks 20 to 37. Mm -hmm. Man, that is a toss up. But I'll go with the home field advantage and say Washington. Okay. Um, Chargers get an easy one. They're going to Carolina to play the Panthers. So I'm going with the Chargers. Yeah. Yeah, Chargers. All right. Eagles at – oh, wait. No, I'm going too soon. I skipped a bunch. Browns at the Jaguars. Hmm. I'm going with the Jags on this. I don't think Deshaun Watson is going to be able to bounce back that fast. See, another tough one because I don't think Cleveland is as bad as they showed, and I don't think Jacksonville's as good as they showed. Mm. But if we're doing an overall pick them for the year, I better go with Jacksonville. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, now we're getting to those three o'clock games. The Raiders at the Ravens. <sighs> Baltimore all the way. I have to agree with you. As much as it hurts me, what Vegas showed me against the Chargers, and I know Chargers are a division opponent, but what I won't even say what they showed me, it's what they didn't show me. Any offensive firepower. And Baltimore can run on you. Vegas cannot stop the run to save their lives. So, yeah. Remember Baltimore. last week and you were telling me that, you know, you're going it's a home game for Las Vegas in LA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I went down in flames on that one. Yeah, until you guys get a quarterback, your team's not going to do anything. You might be right there. Rams are at the Cardinals. I'm going to go with the Rams. That, that ought to be a fun game. Yeah. 
good old what NFC West showdown. Cardinals. Going with the cards. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Steelers at the Broncos. Wow. Will we get any kind of offense out of Pittsburgh? I'm going to go with Denver. I'm going to go with the Steelers. I think they won't do much offensively, but I think they'll do enough defensively to keep the uh, rookie QB in check. I think uh, I think mile high will be the will tip in their favor. Mm. Next up, the uh, last game of the day for the three o'clock games. At Burrowhead, I, I called it that just to be funny. The Chiefs are winning that game against the Bengals. It's not even going to be close. I don't know. I mean, I, the Chiefs, I, I am picking the Chiefs, but I think, like I said last week, it'll be closer than people think. Okay. I'm going to do something a little different before I finish these out because this intrigues me. You say it'll be closer. I got 27-17 Kansas City. 23-20, Kansas City. Okay. We'll have to remember that. And I think what we're going to do is start taking a game and scoring it for tiebreaker purposes. Um, Rounding it out, Sunday night, the Bears that we talked about earlier are at the Texans. Um, they do have a cold defense, but so does Houston. I'm going to give the edge to Houston because they've got offense. Yeah, um, I'm also going to pick the Texans. Um, Chicago's offense will be just fine once Caleb gets his bearings. But they are – they have a couple wide receivers. I think Rome Adunze is, is not going to play. I think they just put him on IR for the next four weeks. I think he sprained his MCL. Mm. And um, Keenan Allen uh, kind of – injured his his heel or something before the game last week. And then I seen him limping off the field during the game this past week. So I think they're a little banged up receiver wise. Uh, so I'm going to pick Houston. Okay. And finally, Monday night, the Falcons at the Eagles. <sighs> That's going to be the worst game on TV. Uh, Philadelphia all the way by, I, I, I mean, agree. Philadelphia by, 30. I mean, they're just going to destroy Atlanta. Yeah. Um, at least I have the satisfaction of looking at this, knowing that once Sunday is over and Monday's over, the Raiders won't be the only 0-2 team in the league. This is true. Now, they'll have Cincinnati with them. And Atlanta. And Denver. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we'll talk about that as the season progresses. Uh, we, we need, we need to establish an identity in Vegas. Uh, are we going to be a run heavy team because we don't have the quarterback? Like you said, I thought Gardner would be better. He's just Garoppolo without getting hurt. Right. But the difference between Garoppolo and Gardner Minshew is Gardner Minshew is a career backup. Yes, he started for a few teams, but he never started as the number one. Yeah. Garoppolo obviously has, took his team to the Super Bowl. You know, they're, so I would give Garoppolo the nod over Minshew. But this is what the new has worn off of your coach. That's what it boils down to. He is what you needed last year. And now that he's in place, nothing's going to change. He is not a good head coach. He's not. Great defensive mind. Mm. Great attitude. Great formal football, former football player. Not a good head coach. I, I, I'm going to say the jury's still out on that. Um, I, I, I that's at least that's your needs... Raider fan brain. No, no. 
no, Washington. my Raider brain would say play out the season, but I would say in three, maybe four more games, we'll know. Oh, he's not Realistic. going anywhere before the end of the season. They're not going to no, fire. No, no, I don't. I don't mean firing. I just mean no, know, know that you know that you know that he's not a good coach. I mean, you should have known that from last year. He wasn't a great coach last year. He didn't did. They exactly. do things that weren't expected. Yes. Yeah. He changed the mindset because everybody in that organization hated numb nuts that was the coach before him mm -hmm. uh josh mcdaniels everybody hated him from the fan base all the way up to the janitor everybody hated him okay so new blood came in everybody's refreshed oh yeah we're gonna do this and that so emotion took them to those victories that they did win last year yeah obviously obviously they don't have a good gm because they would have fixed their quarterback position they knew last year, going in to this year, they did not have a viable quarterback. Well, the, in fairness to them, they did put themselves in a position to get a quarterback. But Minnesota decided, oh, even though we have our QB, we're going to draft another one. Not, not Minnesota, excuse me, Atlanta. And because Atlanta did that, that screwed up the draft right there for us. Because they that's, got Kirk Cousins, not... and we thought, okay, you got cousins. We're next on the clock. Who are you drafting? And they draft a quarterback. It's like, right. Really? But cousins, cousins is coming back from an ACL tear. I mean, an Achilles injury. Mm -hmm. So drafting a quarterback for safety is smart. Oh, I'm not saying it wasn't smart. It was smart. But so, but you guys, there were other quarterbacks on the free agency that they could have went out and got. They could have tried to make a trade up. I mean, they didn't do anything. They didn't try to that get that right there. That's what I would have did. I would have tried to trade up. Here's the thing. Why isn't Carson Wentz playing for you guys? He's a better quarterback than Minshew and, and Aiden. And he's our backup. That's a good question. It's a very good question. I mean, we signed him in the offseason to back up Mahomes. Why didn't you make a run for him? So that's what I mean. That just the little things to be a viable quarterback. Why didn't you go back and get Garoppolo? I probably wouldn't get Garoppolo. I mean, just the fact that he's injury prone, I I I don't feel confident with him. The other wins. options that you mentioned, the other options that you mentioned are just more tantalizing to me. You're right. Carson Wentz would have been a, a great, a, a, we'll call it a stopgap until we develop exactly. a young quarterback. Exactly. Um, I mean, but, you know, even with, Garoppolo, he already has a, uh, a a relationship with that organization, you know. Uh, granted, he probably didn't leave in the best of terms, so that's probably probably why. But the fact that they didn't really do anything to get better. I mean, yeah, you drafted you drafted a great tight end in in uh, Brock Bowers, but there's nobody to throw him the football. Yeah, I, I mean. You're, it's a head scratch. Your offensive really line is. was horrendous, you know, so I don't know. It, th those are the things that when I say that, you know, they're not going to be very good is because he's not a very good head coach. Or he needs but to I, I don't, I don't put it – there you go. Because I don't put it all on the head coach. I put a lot of it on the general manager because he they brought him they're in to make those moves. And he they're peanut butter moves. and jelly, brother. The peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, coaches have to sign off on it. The general manager is not just going to build the team. Veach doesn't just add a player without talking to Andy Reid. No, Veach talks to Satan. I, 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 I believe he's made a deal with the devil. Well, maybe, you're, well, maybe your GM needs to get his number. <laughs> Dial six six six. All right, before we run out of time here, um, let's talk about season six of Game of Thrones. Um, it was probably one of my favorite seasons where I was mistaken last year or last week. This is the season where our uh, end of last season was when they, Jon Snow was stabbed. The first episode is when they rose him up in this season. The uh, Red um, Witch, mm -hmm. or whatever she was called. And, yeah. And, and this is the, this is the first time we get to see uh, what she looks like without that necklace around her neck. 
you know, she's oh, that's right, old, the seriously this, old lady, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I believe, isn't this one, doesn't this one have the Battle of the Bastards in it? Yes, was that that's my six? favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite episode of all time. When they get back at Ramsey Bolton. Uh, yeah, the Battle of the Bastards was my all-time favorite episode of the series entirely. Yeah, season six was a good season. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, season six was the season Arya got her sight back, right? Um, let's see here. Yes, I believe this is where uh she did through all the training and she i think it's like towards the end of the season where she is heading back to westeros she's basically yeah. graduated the school for faces men she killed the the young lady that was training her eventually you know it was either her or, or ira ira whatever her name is ira and uh she killed that girl by cut remember she's she sliced she the candle her, yeah in the dark and then because she out. she was she was proficient at fighting blind and the other yes. one wasn't she she leveraged it yeah yes that was that yes. was wonderful and yes. that's right because the girl that tried to kill her ended up killing that actress that had took aria yes. in yes yeah yes and, and you knew and this from the moment she started caring for her and nursing her back to hell she was doomed yeah, but I didn't. Well, yeah, because I guess you did know she was on the hit list. Yeah. The other great thing about this uh, season was the episode uh, where you realize where the name Hodor came from. Yes, so that, that that was a very episode. sad episode as well. When you very. saw how it how it worked out, yeah, because wasn't it Bran that caused him? to lose it in the first place by going back in time no, and causing what, that? No, what happened was uh, the Three-Eyed Raven was, was showing him the stuff and that's when he realized that he could he could uh, that he could actually talk regularly mm -hmm. and then uh, I think Bran had a dream or something and the Night King touched his arm and that's when the old three array was like, crap, now they know where you're at and they can come in here. There's no protection. And so they came in there, killed the old man. So now Bran is a new three-eyed raven. And all those, uh, the walkers or whatever they're called, were chasing Bran. And, yeah, uh, were chasing Bran and Hoder. And then as they were leaving the tree, he told Bran to hold, hold the, the door. door. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's basically... But in the process, you seen it it twicked his brain back when he was a kid because they never knew when he was a kid why he did that. So it it did it it did like it did connect, but didn't, if that makes any sense. Yes, but it was a very it was a very, very sad episode, uh, but very good. But this season is one of the seasons why I really my favorite character out of everybody is Sansa and why. Uh, I I believe that is because this season started it. Wow, I I I appreciate that she's your favorite character. Um, not even close on my list, but I I like her 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 entire arc. She endured a lot. She endured she, quite a bit. She did, but she ends up being one of the most powerful characters yes. out of the entire story. More powerful and cunning than Cersei. Yeah. So and, I, and I I don't think there's a foe that could that could top her in the series. I I, I agree. Because um, even Daenerys was flawed. Yeah, yeah. She had anger issues underlying, which didn't come out until too late. But you know, that's another story for another time. I I, I don't know. I I still. And I do I also still, believe this is. This is also when they blew up the Cersei blew up the Sept, right? Or no? I thought that was seven. I could be wrong. I'm I'm mm. going through the episodes. Go ahead. Um, no, I was just gonna say, you know, I I still like 
Arya's arc better because she got exactly what she wanted. And, you know, from day one, she was a little tomboy. All she wanted to do was fight and explore. And when you circle around to the very end, she's a trained fighter and she's going off to explore what's west of Westeros. Um, I, I like her yeah, arc because she also had to endure a lot just in a different way. I agree, but the problem with her is she doesn't have, like, Sansa has power of army strength because yeah. she's, and she has cunning. Eric, her sister doesn't. Her sister is a physical fighter and cunning when it comes to that, but she's not politically inclined to outplay somebody in the game of chess if that, or the game of thrones, if that makes sense. Yeah. But yes, the last episode was when they blew up the sept. Um, so it was the very season. last episode. Okay. And this also when you learn that uh, that Bran learned that John uh, was that's the right. Child <clears throat> that's right. Leanna and uh, I think you not Aegon uh, uh, that uh, started with a D. Anyway, he's a Targaryen. So yeah, he's basically because, Daenerys's uh, cousin. The whole time nephew, we thought Daenerys's we thought nephew. that Ned, uh, Eddard Stark had a bastard son. He carried that secret with him to the grave. For his so, sister. Yes. That 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 is uh, that that's truly great man right there. He endured that for the rest of his and life. Then, and then you also see uh Danny on her ship with with all of her army heading to Westeros mm -hmm. at the end of this season. So you know the big fight's coming. She's landing on you know, Westeros ground. She's, I think she ends up at Dragonstone. So, all right. Real quick before we get out of here, did we learn anything more from the Iron Islands and those people during uh, season six? I think this is where you, Balin Greyjoy, uh, the, died and the uncle, um, the evil uncle. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, the evil uncle, because I'm pretty sure that Theon is is back with his sister. Yeah, he was back he with es her. He, he escaped with Sansa uh, from Ramsay, and that's why the Battle of the Bastards happened. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so, but that's when, you know, her uncle threw her dad off the, the, the deal, and um, he starts to be, he wants to be the king of the Iron Islands. All right, show. That's all for today, but we'll be back next week. Take us on out of here. Thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next week. Love each other. Tomorrow's not promise. Later, folks.